Laxatives are a group of drugs used to treat constipation, which is defined as infrequent bowel movements that may be painful or difficult, along with a harder stool consistency. Constipation is important to manage because not only is it uncomfortable for the patient, but it may lead to complications such as fecal impaction, where stool is stuck inside the body and may require surgery, as well as things like delirium. Laxatives mostly work on the stool itself, rather than changing the motility of the GI tract. These include bulk forming laxatives, osmotic laxatives and stool softeners, but there are stool stimulant laxatives that we will cover too. First of all, we have bulk forming laxatives. These are commonly used. Examples include Ispagula husk, also known as Fibogel. Psyllium and methylcellulose are other options, as well as synthetic fibres like Carbofel. These work because they are indigestible hydrophilic colloids that then absorb water. This means that they swell. This swelling leads to distension of the GI wall and therefore stimulates peristalsis and stool movement. Typically, these take two to three days to work, but may work as quickly as 12 hours. Specifically, this group of laxatives is useful in patients with irritable bowel syndrome or diverticulosis, and they are safe to use in the elderly. Due to the bacteria that may digest these plant fibers, you may get bloating and flatulence as side effects. Additionally, fluids need to be taken alongside these bulk forming laxatives, Therefore, they may not be suitable for patients who need to restrict fluid intake, like heart failure patients. Bulk forming laxatives should be used with care in people who have a narrowing of the GI tract, such as people with intestinal strictures or surgical adhesions. This is because there is a risk of blockage. They may also interfere with the absorption of some drugs, such as warfarin, and this is why you should generally take the bulk forming laxatives one to two hours before these drugs. Next, we have the osmotic laxatives, such as lactulose, sorbitol, polyethylene glycol, magnesium hydroxide, also known as milk of magnesium, magnesium citrate, and glycerin. These laxatives are poorly absorbable and are hydrophilic. Therefore, they keep water in the lumen, rather than water being absorbed into the body, which would leave behind drier, harder fecal matter. This also causes some distension of the bowel and therefore can stimulate peristalsis to some degree. Lactulose may actually be used to treat hepatic encephalopathy, where excess ammonia crosses the blood-brain barrier and leads to altered mental status. The intestinal bacteria often produces ammonia, especially when there's a bleed or more protein in the diet. However, if you give lactulose, the bacteria produce more acidic compounds, creating an acidic environment, therefore favoring the production of ammonium NH4 plus rather than ammonium. This is important because the ammonium then gets excreted. PEG is a non-absorbable glycol and is used in colonic cleansing before procedures such as colonoscopies. Glycerin suppositories can be used to relieve occasional constipation and usually causes a bowel movement in around one hour. In terms of general side effects, osmotic laxatives can lead to cramping as well as bloating and flatulence. You also have to consider that they have a stronger risk of dehydration and electrolyte imbalances in the elderly and patients with renal failure. Now we have the stool softeners, and the main example is docusate. Stool softeners allow water and lipids to penetrate stools more easily, which in turn makes the stool softer and easier to pass. Generally, they take a little while longer to work, but they're often used in patients who need to avoid straining too much during defecation. Examples include post-surgical patients, patients who have just given birth, or patients with hemorrhoids, even patients with hypertension and hernias. Finally, we have the stimulant laxatives. Examples include Senna and Bisicodo. These cause direct stimulation of the enteric nervous system as well as colonic secretions. Senna usually takes 8 to 24 hours to work, and in terms of side effects, it includes urine discoloration and a brown pigmentation of the colon, also known as melanosis coli, due to the accumulation of melanin. Bisacodyl is often used to cleanse the colon for colonoscopies and intestinal surgeries. Typically, it takes 6 to 10 hours to work. Finally, to finish things off, 
we have general contraindications to laxatives. First of all, we have patients with a suspected bowel obstruction. We need to keep in mind especially the bulk forming laxatives here, because if they're not taken with adequate water, they can cause blockage. Secondly, we have patients with suspected appendicitis. Thirdly, we have to consider that osmotic laxatives can have a stronger effect on the electrolyte imbalances or dehydration in patients that are elderly or with renal failure, so we need to take care when we use them in this group of patients. Pregnant women should generally avoid stimulant laxatives. The last thing to remember is that long-term laxative use can lead to laxative dependency.